Welcome everyone, episode 282 of Aussie Tech Heads coming to you 22nd of March, of March, 22nd of March and I'll tell you, um, it's uh, raining and it's, it's, getting, it's getting worse and I suppose uh, it is sunny in downtown Sydney this week, is it Eric? Or are you still, you still copping it? Um, we have had good weather during the week but today it was raining. Hmm, that's no good. But anyway, that yeah. is the voice, the golden, the golden tones of Eric Franco. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Will is not here tonight. He's uh, at work once again, working hard, you know, living the dream, making the cash, doing all that sort of stuff. So, um, Will, if you're listening on the, the radio, uh, yeah, have fun out there. So yeah, keep dreaming. Keep yeah. dreaming. That's, right. <laughs> that's right. Take your mind off work. <laughs> Now, uh, what's been going on this week? Uh, yeah, look, the video goes out live every Thursday night, live.thesecrethub.com. You can join us live in the lounge, as so many people do, and have a chat and interact with us. Call us live on Skype. Uh, just sign into Aussie Tech Heads. That's the contact name on Skype, and you can call in while the show's on. And I think we're going to have a call in tonight. I know someone who's got an iPad 3. Um, yeah, so as I said, the radio, radio.thesecrethub.com, and also the video is always on the YouTube dot com forward slash the secret hub and uh yes and uh and always a thank you to brad and tech webcast dot info for the show before the uh, live stream of a thursday night and tonight he had a very interesting guest on and 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 slapped my wrists that i i have forgotten the name of the guest but he was an, an a voiceover artist a voiceover professional and i it, think uh, his name was also brad mm, okay but it was very good and that was episode 179 from memory if you're looking to hear a bit of uh bit of insight into how audio voiceover works and how people like it and all that sort of stuff go on to do that uh the paper comes out twice a day paper.aussietechheads.com.au and also through your twitter feed if you wish two stories every half hour breaking news stories that is every half hour uh just follow aussie tech news all right well what else has been going on i can give you guys a youtube update if you like um everything's fine and dandy so far so good back to the uh to the more than 15 minute uploads uh, however, the uh, the the little copyright notices kept coming back, and one of them came back for the Aussie Tech Ed episode we did when Steve Jobs passed away, and Stanford University objected to my objection, and uh, said that the, the and said that they they're staking their claim to the copyrighted material that we used. So at the end of the day, I just deleted that th that episode off. So uh, no harm done, hopefully. So they can you know they can keep that, I suppose. Uh, the only the other interesting little thing was uh, there was the Christmas episode. Now I played a track, I played a Twisted Sister track at the end. Uh, uh, Come all ye faithful, I think it was. Now I downloaded this from the the Podsafe music site, and now they're blowing me. The the people who oh, people oh. who record who must own Twisted Sister are blowing me because I, I've used it in the podcast. Now come on, I'm going a minute. So so people can. Um download this freely and play it and distribute it on usb keys if they wanted to but you put it on a podcast and they're getting up you well that doesn't make sense to me well I, I downloaded it from the from the pod safe site right that's what i mean anyone can do that so that's what mm. i mean if you so, download it from the pod safe you could have downloaded it put it on a usb key and given it to everybody you know or emailed it yeah, so well, un unless that that's up, someone's uploaded it to the Podsafe site uh, illegally. So well, look, that's the only thing. But wouldn't they vet that? Wouldn't they know? They have algorithms running on those sites as well. Oh, look, they don't know. They're probably not as big as Google. They probably don't have as uh, as big a you know bigger crunching computer down there. But uh, yeah, but but in any case, like it doesn't matter. Like they're gonna start gonna start getting upset. I'll just delete the old episodes. Like it doesn't matter. Um, like I do it all in good faith, you know. There's no harm done, and as you might have noticed of late, the last couple of episodes, I've decided that all the pictures that I uh, show through the show, through the episode, the recording, I have been putting the 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 where I've got them from. So hopefully that will also help uh, ease some of the uh, some of the issues maybe that might creep up. But but anyway, uh, we're just fair use all the way, fair use. So I don't know what's going on, but I think YouTube's just catching me out with the bot. And just, just got to, you know, yeah. the, the Steve Jobs thing was a bit longer. It was probably, yeah, probably bordering on the other side of fair use. I, I did probably play about two minutes of it. But anyway, that's... Oh, but still, yeah, I, I um, what you call it, I um, 
had a similar issue during the week. I got a notice from uh, YouTube right. stating that I had. Remember when Julia Gillard was, um, what you call it? That riot that happened. Yes. Yep. Remember that? Yep. Um. And I, it was a it was a, a, a routers or routers uh, whatever you want to call it. Oh um, yeah, yep. Yeah. Story. And I and I played that on chewing the fat. Yeah. And they they gave me a letter saying that it's copyrighted. So I wrote back to them, told them the same thing that it's a news site, and we were commenting on on the events of the day. Uh, we weren't making any money off it, mm. anything like that. And um, I have yet to hear back from them. Yeah, so I think what happens is, as a, as a matter of course, that yeah, YouTube must obviously notify the copyright owner and then they probably view it and they go yes or no. But I'll tell you, like, what would be helpful is, I don't know, like you guys probably don't have never seen the back end of the YouTube upload, I'm not sure. But what, that, what happens, it, it, I just wish that because, say, like I use, say, half a dozen pictures in a, in a video, yep. in the video podcast, yep. I just wish they'd tell me exactly which one is infringing. Because like, I'm not going to go right. sit through the whole episode and go, oh, is it that one? Or is it that one? You know, so. Yeah. But anyway, so hopefully that's all finished and done with. So um, I'm just going to delete them if they, if they sort of do that. But uh, yeah, so let's get on with the show. What else have we got on time? We've got a couple of, oh, a few stories, a couple of interesting stories. And also Garth is back with another app review. And I think he's, uh, he's moving on to a bit of a game one tonight, so that's all good. Now, mm. Apple, oh, more, more of an update. My Apple TV is going absolutely fantastic. Oh, fanboy. Uh, oh, I've turned into a fanboy. Look, and I, I went down two days later and bought something else. Here it is. I haven't opened it yet. Oh, you did buy it? <laughs> yeah, I've got the... Uh, the, the, the uh, Airport Express. Oh, no, don't yeah. worry, mate. Do you just uh, hang on to that for a couple of weeks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> There we go. But I'm thinking, I'm sort of tossing up now. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep it, but like in actual fact, I'll put that away. But would you actually be better off just to get another Apple TV? It does the same thing pretty much, except it's mm. it's not a router. Um, so not as well. I'll tell you why the Apple the Airport Express is good because he it comes with if you open it up, it's a little similar size to the Apple TV, yeah, white. Um, and it comes with a cord, yep. so you can plug it in and have it lying around or whatever. Or it comes with a, a, um, just a power adapter that plugs straight into the puck. Right. Right. So you can just plug it straight into the PowerPoint and it hangs off the wall. Right. Right. So, like, you know, when you buy those um, air freshener things like, you know, yeah. plug in. Yeah. It's like that. It just plugs. It's right there. There's no cables, no cords, nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. So you plug it in. Because the main... And then there's your... And then from there you can just um, you you can plug in a set of speakers, obviously. Mm. Um, your um, you can plug in uh, what you call a USB port, so you can you can charge your phone off it. Yep, yep, yep. And you can, and, and if it's uh, configured correctly and it's hopping back to your main Wi-Fi, you can be sitting next to it and decide that you want to plug an Ethernet cord into it and run yes. off Ethernet. Because the the yeah, the main reason I thought I would I'd like it is to uh, say like just so I could take it say out the back near the barbecue and just plug the speakers into it and use the iPad yes. while I'm sitting out there to to run it. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah but look, oh look, it's, it's great. Like I, I've at last, like finally at last, have I been able to start watching some podcasts and listening to podcasts yeah. like without going through a freaking hassle. Oh yeah, I, I've I've given up. I've given up on it. Except, but now I'm at home. I can look at the. Uh, on the t I can send it to the Apple TV, which is the TV is right in front of me as I as I sit here, have it playing while I work or whatever. Uh, I, I've set up a smart playlist in iTunes. So what happens is that the, all the podcasts that download it only sucks into the smart playlist any podcast that hasn't had any plays. So I'm always up to date with the. With oh, that's the, brilliant! You're gonna have to show me how to do that. <laughs> So like oh it's it's great it's great and you know you just I can send it to the Apple TV from the iPad from the PC from the Mac any mach any Apple machine I can send to the iP iPad to oh, iTV so it's good it's great so what like, I do like about it is the podcast button on the you know, the category in iTunes in in Apple TV so you could scroll across bang podcast yep yep and all the main all and you go all technology science mm. news and whatever. I suppose that's if you're using the remote for it yes, or, yes, or if yes. you're using the remote app on the iPad for it. Yes. But yeah, um yeah. 
But like now, like with it yeah. all, with all these updates for the with the iTunes and everything, like you can sit on your iTunes on the PC and just click a button and it and it just Send it, tr- yep. just throws Send it. Send it across. It's really good. Very, it's very, very good. good. And for one hundred nine dollars, who can complain at that? Who who can who can throw mud at that? Eh? Hey? Hey? Nobody. That's brilliant. Mm. All right. Now, well, let's get on to some stories. Jeez, we can nearly finish the show. No but stories. What's going bang, on? Hang it on. <laughs> all right. Now. Uh, yeah, t- Vandals cut some Telstra cable through the week. I don't know if you heard about yes. that one. Yes, I did. Yeah, but, uh, that wasn't... Where do they cut that? In Maitland, in the Hunter Valley, yes. Yeah, somewhere up there. And a deliberate cut to major uh, fibre cable connecting Maitland and Hunter Valley in New South Wales affected thousands of people. 19,000 local phone services, 8,000 ADSL servers, and a small number of mobile towers. Mm. So it's apparently... No cut- cable out there. Oh, no. <laughs> Apparently cut at 1.30 a.m. Yeah, I was ready to see, you know, it affected like 20,000 dial-up customers, <laughs> all this sort of stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, so ADSL customers, that would be ADSL 1 too, I bet. I wouldn't mind uh, for the For the most part, I would, I would imagine it would be probably ADSL 1, yeah. Yeah, so those guys, yeah. So Telstra, if you're in the Hunter Valley up there and your internet was uh, stuffo, that's probably why someone's hit the button. I or, just wonder though. Hit the would, would they, I'm not an electrician, or have no knowledge of electrical currents, or very little knowledge of electric currents and engineering. If you go in there and cut a cable, aren't you risking electrocution? Well, maybe not fibre optic. It's just light, well, isn't got, it? Just got stuff running through. If anyone knows the answer, can you? Um, I don't know. Email Julia Gillard at liar.com or Glenn at AussieTechheads.com.au. Now, uh, now I suppose you would be uh, across the Apple stories this week, would you? Not really. Oh, There's well, only one main one. That's the what they're going to do with their cash, but that's pretty much all that they did this week. And obviously, the iPad was released last week. All right, we can start with some. Um, we can start with an iPad story. Oh, look at that up there. Okay. I'll just move that down. Oh, here. just I was thinking, we're on the iPads now. I was, you know, obviously. I do, um, I do, um, who sent me this? Okay, it doesn't matter. I was, um, what you call it, keeping an eye on Telstra. Because if I'm going to buy one, I mm. will buy a Telstra one because I can put it on a plan. And, you know, we went through the mathematics of this last week and it's, it's still a pretty good deal. You end up only paying $30 a month for four gig of data, which is pretty good. Yep. So, and I kept watching it. And every time I went in, you know, because you go to click buy and it tells you what's in stock. Mm. And then it went. For, then one day, all sixty-four gigs were gone. All sixty-four White gigs. And black. Yeah, gone. And then thirty-two gigs gone. Wow. And then the next day, all sixteen gigs gone. Wow. And then the next day, out of stock completely for yeah. three days. Gone completely. Yeah. But then today, I got an email saying iPads now in stock. So you get, I nice. went back in there, and sure enough, they've got all of them. Right. In every configuration, Telstra, I've got massive amounts now. So are you going to get one? Still don't know. <laughs> Apple has claimed a record first weekend of new iPad sales. Three million units sold globally after the release. Apple's mm. senior vice... Well, I, said, I said five. I, I pretty... guessed five, so I was a little bit off. But still, three million is good. Yeah, yep, yep. Apple's senior vice president of the worldwide marketing, Philip Schiller that it was the strongest Apple product launch yet. So that's saying something, isn't it? I think that they're yeah, obviously... They do say that all the time. Yeah, they probably do, but they must be reaching some sort of tipping point here. But, but then, hang on, but then the next one, Apple sold 37 million iPhones in the first quarter. But it, but it, 37 million iPhones, but it only represents 9% of the handsets of, sold. Of, of total, of, of, if that mean, does that mean 9% of all handsets? So there's a, if that's in the, the case, quarter, in the, the, yeah. and they haven't saturated the market yet, so they've got a long way to go. Well, that's right. They're, that's the case. They're rubbing their hands together thinking, we've got another eight, not 90% to go. Yeah. yeah. You know what I found, what, what uh, statistic I found uh, interesting during the, during the uh, week, and the Android lovers will, will, will thank me for this, um, the, 20, the amount of iPads sold on opening weekend was twenty five percent of all i of all Android tablets in existence. Say that again. 
the amount of iPads sold on the first weekend yeah. const- constituted 25% of all Android tablets yeah. in existence. Yeah. Well, iPad is selling more than 55 million units since the launch in 2010. Uh, Apple, 15.43 million iPads in the fiscal 2012 first quarter. Fifteen. Which that would be uh, January, February, March, right? Well, it must be, yeah. First quarter 2012, yeah. yeah. So they, uh, uh, Cooks has said, we believe the, the tablet market will eventually surpass the PC market in size. It's just a question of when. That may be true, but a lot of people panic about that and they think, oh, no, what if, you know, they can't stop making PCs. I don't think that's what that statistic is. So I think what's no. going to happen is people will still buy laptops, but oh, what's yep, going to happen yep. is everyone's going to have a, a, a tablet as well, whether it be an, mm. an iPad or something else. Yeah. Everyone will have a smartphone, mm. and that could be an Android smartphone. I don't know how smart they are, but they call them smartphones. Yep. Um, you can have an Android tablet and, you know, a Linux box. Yeah. Well, that's right. But it's like, um, it's like you know, people and houses. Like, you live in one house, but there's a lot of people live in the same house. So you might have that's one right. PC, but uh, everyone's right. got a, a tab, a tablet. That's right. So a lot of people will go, oh, well, you know, you can't keep... You can't. I hope tablets don't overtake PCs. Well, they will, but not in that sense. Mm, yeah. Because people still need to work on laptops. You can't work on a tablet. You just can't. It's no, impossible. no. The new iPad is yet to arrive, but it will be tomorrow in the European countries and New Zealand. So I wonder if all the little New Zealanders out there are camping out, camping out. Kim.com will buy one. He's got 50000 a month now. He, he's, not in the, um, he's not even in the bloody New Zealand anymore, is he? Yes, he is. He hasn't been extradited yet. Oh, okay, rightio. Well, I'll tell you, uh, did you see this little story about talking about camping out? Uh, Steve Wozniak queued up for the iPad 3. I heard that. I heard that. Yes. He, does it, he, does it, he does it all the time, apparently. So, yeah, he, he was... Every new Apple product, he lines up for it. He was spotted waiting in line for the new iPad at the Apple store in Century City. And he was number two. Number one was his wife, who was first in line. Right. This isn't the first. I know, where, I, know where, I know where Century City is. I know it's right next door to Beverly Hills. I know that shopping centre well. Okay. So this isn't the first time that he's camped out, as Eric was saying. Last October, Wozniak was the first in line for the iPhone 4S at the store in Los Gatos, California. And, the, uh, and he was also waited in line at the Apple store at Valley Fair Mall in San Jose, California for the iPhone 3G in 2008. So, uh, yeah, he's obviously a fan. So... Mike, my, my question would be: Is is this something that um, what Apple should be doing something about? Do you think you know, like, or is this? No, why? I don't know. Like the the co-founder of it, I don't yeah, know. It still, he doesn't work for Apple. He's just a, he's just a civilian now. He can do what he wants. True. He's true. got a fair bit of money. Yeah. Tr- yeah. He can do what he wants. Very true. But like, but if you if you're if the company, but it's a big rap for Apple, don't you think? That if a co-founder is lining up with everybody else, I think that's good promotion for Apple. Yeah, I sort of took it a different way. I sort of sort of took it that he was on the outer, which I suppose, as you said, he's got nothing to do he with is, it. He is in a sense because he hasn't worked for Apple for a very long mm. time. Yeah, I don't know. I would have just thought, like, oh, look, the poor bugger, just just send him one. You know, he's obviously a fan. Oh, well, that too. Yeah, so, they probably should just send him a new one. Yeah, just, you know, yeah, just an automatic. Just, uh, you know. Yeah, just send him one and go. Here you go, buddy. Get on with it. Now, uh, yes, yeah, too yeah too so. Tight. Yeah, maybe. Now, well, Jobs is gone now, so attitudes may change. And and so they have. So they have. We were only talking about this the other week, about the stock and the dividend. Yes. What's going on with that? Oh, well, they're going to do, you know, keep their investors happy, and they've still got enough cash to um, function. They've got more than enough cash to function. So so apparently this is... They've it's got, not an issue, really. So apparently they've got like about $100 billion in the bank. In the cash, yeah, yeah. and this this stock, yeah. the dividend. There, there it is. Next, that's why he's <laughs> smiling. <laughs> the dividend is uh, two dollars sixty five per share. First, the first dividend uh, paid since about nineteen ninety five, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So it's going to be begin on July first. It's going to cost them about uh, forty five billion in dividends. Does that sound yep. right? Forty five billion. Uh, let me do this. Let me do the maths for you. That's two sixty five a quarter, so that's four quarters. That's ten dollars sixty. 
over 600 shares. It's at 1.8% yield, so you still get more if you put your money in the bank. Um, but you, what you get, what you lose in yield, you'll get in growth. Mm. And, and you know, if you bought your shares at now three years ago, their shares were two hundred dollars. Now, now six hundred dollars. So, yeah, so it's so, not bad going if you had a few thousand locked up in there. Yes. Um, Forty-five billion. Look, that sounds about right, but that's over time. That would be until um, when do they say that's going to take? Uh, well, it's b- going b- 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 to start on July one. And, uh, 45 billion in the first year. I can't imagine it'd be in the first year. Probably uh, in over, two, might be over two years, possibly. Yeah. So, so this hasn't. Had, this is not a done deal yet. Apparently, still got to go past the board of directors. So well, no, they're not going to. They're not going to say no. Well, not now that got, it's out there. They've got. Sh- they've got <laughs> shares up to the yin yang. They're going to go. Yeah, give me some of that. <laughs> Apple give me said some it, of my dividends. Apple said it will spend. Wait, t- uh, Tim Cook, when he got appointed um, CEO, was given. Shares, uh, incentive shares. Yeah, that he doesn't get straight away. They vest over time. Um, total value, five hundred million dollars. Oh. Right, that's what shares he got. Now, yeah. he's about a hundred million dollars of that. He's already got. So if he pays it, if they pay him a dividend of one point eight percent, his dividend over the next year. In dividends alone is going to be 1.8 million dollars <laughs> yeah, and gonna... the director a lot of these directors have got um you know 20 million dollars in stocks and whatnot sometimes more they're not going to say no to that they're not saying no to that no way so mm-hmm. so apple said it's also, also going to spend 10 billion to buy back its own stock over three years yeah now what's that what's yeah. the uh motive behind that uh, what what happens there is that it's um it, there's, when there's when you buy back your own stock, you buy them back and you cancel the shares. Basically, you throw them in the bin, and the stock goes back to the seller, the shareholder. And what happens with generally with that in a in a simplified simplified matter is that um, it keeps the share price up because there are less shares on issue. Right, right, okay. You know, supply and demand. So if there was, for example, if the value of a company was a hundred dollars, mm. and it was a hundred shares on issue. That would mean that each share was worth a dollar. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, you buy back fifty of those shares for a dollar. There's now only fifty shares um, on issue, but the value of the company is still a dollar. Uh, it's still a hundred dollars. Yep. So now the share is worth two dollars a share. Right. Right. So they're going to start doing this, and over three years, starting in the fiscal year 2013. Which I'm not sure when the the US fiscal year starts and stops, but uh, it's more than likely. I think it might be around September. December. They have um. They their financial year is January to December. It's basically a calendar year. Mm. Well, that'd make it easy, wouldn't it? What, yeah. what, why are we different? Why Why did we pick uh, July June? You know what? I would prefer the way we've got it because I know a lot of people that work for US companies here in Australia, and they have their year end. And all their finalization on New Year's Eve. Oh, There's no way. Yes, fair enough. Fair no enough. No way. You know why the Australians <laughs> change it? You go, no way, mate. We're fucking late. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll write, write that edit point down. <laughs> 20, 20, 23, 46. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Have sharpened that pencil, boyo. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's only this big now. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of writing over the past few episodes. Now, Apple said that the primary objective of the stock reimburse, repurchase plan is to neutralise the impact of dilution from future employee equity grants and employee stock purchase programs. Yes, and that's right. That's something that's along the lines of what Eric just said. Now, for its fiscal 2012 first quarter, which ended... Oh, here we go. Which ended December 31. Oh, they must have a September one then. Apple reported revenue of more than I think it'd be different for companies, wouldn't it? Don't companies and personal will go? But no, anyway. no, no. All right, but so in America, you can choose your financial year. You can choose. You can choose your financial year. Apple, I so say, for the first quarter, for its fiscal 2012 first quarter, which ended uh, December 31st, Apple reported revenue of more than 46 billion. Mm. Uh, that, uh, that's up 73 percent from one year ago, and earnings of 13.1 billion. Okay. All right, good stuff. Now, also, just to sort of finish off on the uh, Apple stories, 
if we can. The iPad 3 has been jailbroken already, as you would expect. The new iPad yes. has signal, blah, 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 blah. 9 to 5 Mac has posted screenshots of a jailbroken iPad 3 just hours after the, ta- uh, the tablet went on sale on last, whenever it was last week. The All ha- right, well, so what can you do with a j- jailbroken iPad? What's the big, what's, wh- why would you do it? I wouldn't do it, personally. Uh, I think yeah, that- but why would people do it? I don't understand. You can probably open it up so you could uh, say do or you get those the what is that Cydia store isn't there another app yeah, store yeah 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 so you get in there and get all the the apps that Apple won't authorize uh, for for one reason yeah, but there's or not other. many now really there's not much much there's not much of that are going around most of the app, apps you want are already there mm. I don't understand what the big attraction is look I think they really don't. You know they're trying to uh, work. They're trying to jailbreak the Apple TV as well, and that's just because I think they just want to be able to put apps on it. And I think one of the yeah. one one person I I was uh, listening to said they they jailbroke the last version and put XBMC onto it. And but what what is that? That's like a media uh, open source media center. And, and oh, I see. So obviously, you know, it's a, it's a nice little little hockey puck media center, but he's also got the advantage of probably sucking up. All types of uh, codecs and all that sort of stuff. So, um, mm. yeah, good stuff. Mm. Good stuff. All right. Now, what we might do is uh, if uh, we might have a – might go over to Garth, eh? Do you reckon we could squeeze Garth in? Squeeze Garth in. Squeeze away. Let's see if uh, the, the if Garth's audio f- fails again tonight. I worked out after, la- after we played it last week, and you might have noticed that Garth's audio is a bit low. For some reason, uh, the Google Hangout – just it, it doesn't like doesn't like the uh, audio if I play a, a video. So go and go and sort that one out, will you? But um, but anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's go and see what's going on over here with Garthy boy. Hey, Glenn and Garth, you've heard of seven little Indians, seven <laughs> little nuns, <laughs> seven little women. Well, seven little women. Yes. Glenn, have you told <laughs> have you told anyone about this problem you have? No, but geez, <laughs> okay. I, I like the number seven. But what what have you got? Seven little words. I have seven little words. We haven't done a we have, just thinking the other day, look, we haven't done a game yet. No. Here's not. a um this is a nice nice easy fill in five minute kind of game. It's a it's a you know, word game. It's not a shoot 'em up kind of style, but um but I love it. Hmm. Basically, um it's a free app. You get fifty 50 games off the bat for free. Nice. And then you can buy packs of 50 games whenever you run out, you know. Oh, yeah, right. So the basic premise is you get a whole heap of tiles, like uh, Scrabble tiles. Yep. Instead of having just single letters on them, each each one has a, like two letters. Yep. Like it might have a TH or AE or whatever. Yeah. Um, then you get seven, the sev- the, there might be, say, 20 or 30 of these tiles. Yep. And all of those tiles rearrange into seven little words. Oh, jeez. So then you get seven clues. You might have a clue that's, you know, whatever it is. Yep. And it'll show you the, yes, this this word has six letters and it's, you know, whatever, the (laughs) Eiffel Tower or whatever, you know, whatever it is, whatever the clue is. Right, yes. So then you've got to find which, um, you know, rearrange a couple of those tiles into that word. Yep. And then you obviously you've got less tiles left to make up the other six little words you've got left. So you've got your clues. Like we're looking at a demo here on, yep. on screen. So Beautiful. you've got a clue uh, for score. And for score. That'll be 80. That's right. So That's you need right. to find an EI, a GH, a TY. That's right. And is there an EI? Is this just a, a – this is a pretty crappy demo. I can't see an EI in there. <laughs> That's for great, score. isn't it? But that's right. Eighty is the right. That's that is the right because it does tell me the solution, Garth. That's there you right. go. Yeah, so it is eighty. If, but if the solu- no- you know what, if the solution's already shown there, yep. The tiles once the once that answer is oh, in, right. Right. the tiles are no longer in the available tiles because you've right. used them up. Right. Well, let's see how good you are. There's another one here. Harmless. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> so, Harmless. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's let's say uh, starts with a B. Benign. Yeah, very good. I would never have got that. <laughs> I would never have got it. But so, so each of these are what? F- uh, seven letters. Seven letters. Is that right? The answer. No, the le- answers can be any length. Oh, okay. But there's yeah. seven words you've got there's to find. There's seven words that you've got to find out of however many 
sets of tiles you've got. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you get 50 of these, like that's one game you've got on screen, seven yeah. words. Yes. And you get 50 of those free. And yep. then if you like, you can buy the, you know, buy a pack of another 50. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice, good work. Yeah, it's a nice little game. It's a nice little, uh, probably little time time pass at the yep. train station. Waiting for the bus, whatever yep. you're doing. Yep. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you happen to be doing when you've got That's a bit it. of time on there. Instead of twiddling your thumbs, exercise your brain. <laughs> exercise your brain just a wee bit. All right, so Garth at, at Garth underscore H-U-M. We'll, That's me. We'll see you next time. Good night. Ciao, ciao. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, there was it. Yeah, so how'd you like that? A game. A game from Garthy Boy. So um, he's on fire, isn't he? So, yeah, go and have a check that one out. It's pretty good. Now, yeah, we've, got, uh, we've, got a, we've got a caller. Let's go, to the, let's go to the phones. I believe we, we might, we're going to finish off with the Apple stories. Hey, Milo. G'day, guys. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. Now, what, what have you bought yourself? Well, I bought myself a little birthday present from yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Well, what did you uh, buy? Yeah, I bought the new iPad. Oh, third nice. Gen, third generation or whatever they're calling it these days. Nice. What model did you get? I got the 64 gig in white. Oh, sweet as. And uh, what's your first thoughts? Um, very impressive, actually. Um, it's a little bit heavier than I thought it would be um, compared to the iPad 2. Right. Uh, um, but the screen is just amazing. It's better than my 42-inch uh, screen, which is only an SD. Yeah, I see. Right, right. And uh, so you got an iPhone as well? Is this true? No, I've got an old Nokia something or other. It's oh, a okay. Of, a couple of years old, and I'm just about waiting for the uh, plan to run out so I can get an iPhone. Right. And what do you and have you like you download any apps or anything like that? Um, yeah, I got a few apps. Uh, I got the TuneIn Radio app, which is great. Yes. Um, Vivo, which is like a, a, a police scanning type. Uh, application. Oh, okay, yep. So you got because uh, you do a lot of travelling in a camper van? Yeah, we, well, we do a lot of travelling in the motorhome, the TARDIS. Right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so those apps will come in handy. You'll be able to find out where the Smokies are. <laughs> yeah, yep, and uh, usual Facebook and Twitter stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. p- played a bit of that, uh, what's the app called? The Flight Sim one, the Metal Storm. Right, right. And the graphics on that are just unbelievable for a little handheld, you know. Yeah, you need you need to get yourself the little hundred dollar Apple TV, Milo. Then you can you can send the picture to the TV and use the iPad to play, but it comes yeah, out on be, your TV. That'd be nice. Yeah, but can you, you do the games? You do? Any games you play on the um on the iPad can be sent straight to the Apple TV. Is the uh, the uh, Apple TV HDMI or does it have the um, yeah. AVs? Because I haven't got the HDMI yet. No, it's just over your Wi-Fi, mate. No, no, it's HDMI to go no. to the, to the, go to the TV. Yeah, but it's got you've got AirPlay on your iPad, and it's got AirPlay on your Apple TV. Activate AirPlay. Yeah, with the hook it. Send, hook it into the TV. Yeah, I haven't yeah, got HDMI send, though. You can send it directly over Wi-Fi. No, he wants to no to get the video from the Apple TV into the TV. TV, yeah. Oh right, right. Yeah. I thought you were talking about you want to send stuff from your iPad to the TV. No, 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 not yet. No, no, he just he just hasn't got the HDMI to go tape that Apple TV to the TV. No, what? but I'll um, get a few things oh. paid off before <laughs> I do that. Yeah, but you, you can probably get converters on eBay. But uh, but yeah, so you, are you going to jailbreak your iPad? I don't see the point. No, I don't either. And uh, what else? What else is good about it? Um, well, I just like I looked around and I thought of going flexi rent. Um, thought you figured you'd end up paying way over the top what you've already paid for it. Mm. So mm. I sort of took Eric's uh, thought into consideration from last week uh, with the Telstra plans. And Telstra, this is funny actually, the tel- people at the Telstra shop knew bugger all. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't surprise <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, and so I went home, looked it up on, the, on their website and rang them up on the phone and they said, oh, we'll have it for you on Wednesday and arrived yesterday. Nice. Yesterday morning. Nice. Now you had a you had an issue with uh, charging it, didn't you? you? There was some issue there. You it wasn't. Yeah. It's not so much an issue, but it's what Eric pointed out to me on Twitter, and uh, I've since done a bit of research, and they say that um, it's best to just charge your i iPad with, or at least the new one with the uh, 
charger that came with it because apparently the USBs aren't powerful enough mm. to uh, charge it. Yeah, I, I saw that going through the the tweets the other day. But what? Uh, yeah, I'd sort of. I've got. A, I bought a iPad dock, and I've, I've also just plugged that straight USB straight into a powered hub, and that seems to work okay for me as well. If I wanted to hook it up to the computer. Yeah, I mean that, that's fine because I can do the wi- Wi-Fi sync now on it, so I'm not really that worried about it. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Uh, but all I need, I just got to get a, a decent stand for it, and a, maybe a case or some sort. Oh, yeah, you can buy stands that uh, that uh, that stand on the floor. Is that what you thought it means? So you can just put well, it. Well, when you when you say like so like if you want to watch a movie or if you just want to surf the net on it and mm. in bed or something, you know, without it lying on straight down, you know. And you got a cover but, for it. Not yet. I just, well, I only got it yesterday, so I haven't had a chance. Yeah, get a little cover for it. And uh, any other uh, recommendations, Eric, for, for the iPad? No, they, they pretty much... Oh, you've got to get the iPhoto app. Oh, yes. Yep, that's pretty good. Uh, $4.99, you've got to get that. Mm. Look, I yeah. noticed, actually, that I, I was thinking, I was as I was transferring these podcasts, I finally got these podcasts going, and I thought transferring them to the I, iPad from the iTunes... And I thought, geez, there's a lot of these apps. They're taking up like about four gig. And I'm thinking, what the hell's taking up four gig on apps? And so I started going through them. And GarageBand, 1.1 gig. So she, it's not a small little oh, fella. Right. Yeah. So um, I would don't know how big the how big the iPhoto one would be, but uh, but anyway, like what do you got, Milo? 64 gig. You'll be you be swimming in space. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my iTunes to work. It's not um, currently so far. I'm down to 37 gigs. Yeah. That I've used. All right. um, and I've got about four and a half gigs worth of apps so far. And you're on the Telstra 3G? 3G, yes. Yep. Um, I'm doing the four, four gig a month plan to see right. how I go with it. And what about the dual, the dual 3G? Are you getting faster, like really good speeds? I haven't uh, tried it yet. Uh, I've only just been messing around with my Wi-Fi at home. All right, so good stuff. I'm, I'm going to, down to Canberra for a couple of days next week. Um, so I'll take it with me then and give it a good run. Yeah. I'll let you know what it's like next week. All right, good stuff. Um, all right, is there anything and else? It, or that? And, yep. and it was my birthday yesterday too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so happy happy birthday and uh, you bought yourself a nice little birthday present. Are we allowed to see how old you are or is that a secret? Uh, 42. 42, same as me. Good work. <laughs> good work. All right, Milo, thanks for ringing in. No worries, thanks, and guys. We'll see you next show as usual. time. Thanks, Milo. See you, mate. Ta-da. Thanks, Bye. Milo. All right, so good stuff. So Milo's bought himself a birthday present and uh, going strong, going strong. Good work. Now, what else are we going to do? Let's uh, better get in the... Uh, Eric, did you want to um, you, you listen to a book through the week or just a recommendation of one that you would like? I have, a rec- I have a recommendation. All right, and your recommendation this week, audible.com. 100,000 books, 100,000 books you can listen to. If you want one for free and you haven't already done so, go to the aussietechheads.com.au website, download the, I mean, just click on the banner ad, Audible banner ad, and you'll get a book for free. And you'll possibly, if you're interested, get this one for free. What have you got, Eric? It's called Private Games and uh, by James Patterson, who's a fairly well-known, prolific author. And I thought being the Olympics in London this, this year... Um, this is about the is a fictional account of terrorism during the London Olympics. I thought it'd be a good one to recommend, mm. and I'll just read a little bit of the publisher's summary. Uh, and the name of this investigation firm is called Private. Okay, so Private, the world's most renowned investigation firm, has been commissioned to provide security for the 2012 Olympic Games in London. Its agents are the smartest fastest and most technologically advanced in the world. And 400 of them have been transferred to London to protect more than 10,000 competitors who represent more than 200 countries. Yeah, wow. So, did, sorry, did you did you say that you no, looked at it? You, you, you listened to it? I had, No, I, I did listen to snippets but, yeah. and, it's, and, it, and I'd read some reviews and it does look like an entertaining read or nice. listen as the company be. Nice. So you can have a have a look at that one. That's uh, Eric's pick for this week. And uh, once yeah. again, if you haven't already done so, you can go and get the uh, get it for free down at the uh, click on the link. Private Games, James Patterson and Mark Sullivan. 
So there you go. Good on you. Would you, like a, would you like a grab? Oh, if you got one there, why not? Why, why not? Private. Made them an abomination and a mockery of their intent. What? Marshall cries, acting bewildered. What are you talking about? I deliver the evidence against him in three damning sentences, whose impact turns the skin of his neck livid and his carotid artery a sickening, pulsing purple. No, he sputters. That's, that's not true. You can't do this. Have you gone utterly mad? Mad? Me? A little bit dramatic oh. there. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> it was. But uh, look, this one this one only goes for nine and a half hours. Woohoo! <laughs> the Olympics will be over by the time you finish the book, and that's perfect. <laughs> All right. So, good one. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for that one. And, um, yes, look, we've got a couple of more stories to get through uh, tonight, or this episode. Now, look, there was one here I came across about scammers. Scammers fleecing us Australian, us Aussies, $85 million last year. Not Terrible. me. Terrible. No, no, but just just scammers from overseas, all these internet calls and all this sort of stuff. The most common types of scams reported to the ACCC included upfront uh, fee fraud, making up a third of total reported scams. Hacking, where scammers ask for remote access to victims' computers, and I'm sure, oh, look, I've had heaps of these phone calls. I got stuck into one guy one night, uh, like, like real stuck into him, and uh, haven't heard back. So that was good. He actually rang... Yeah. Oh, he, um... He, I got that stuck into him. He rang back just to abuse me. That's, that's oh, how, really? Yeah. You're joking. He rang back because I upset him that much. He rang back to abuse me, and I gave it to him again. I let him have it again. <laughs> I questioned Came every, back for more. I questioned everything about him from his height to his sexuality, and he, and, and he was angry. <laughs> <laughs> he was angry. Was he, where was he from? Uh, oh, Indian. Where was he Ish? from? I would say India sounded like that. Did, did, did you accuse? Did you call him? Did you question his orientation? I did, <laughs> I did, and he, that he didn't like that. Uh, last year, Microsoft dumped a gold status partner, uh, Comantra, following access accusations it fleeced its customers uh, in all these. It was taking part in these call scams. The Indian company was accused oh, of calling Microsoft oh. customers and charging as much as $300 to remove what it claimed were malware infections on their computer, on like, your computer. Uh, it has denied these allegations. So, uh, now look, I've got, a li- yeah, I've got a link here. Now, why did I put this link in the show notes? Let's have a look, eh? I must have did it for a reason. Let's see. What, 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 mm. <laughs> let's what see. What surprise? <laughs> I don't know why I put a link there, but let's see. What surprise would I have? Oh, there you go. Oh, it's just a link to the story, see? Yeah, so anyway, um, going, go, going, going, going back. So now I thought there was some, there was some stats released today about scams. Uh, the ACCC received over 83,000 scam reports in 2011, almost that, which almost doubled that of 2010. Now the scam losses totaled more than 85.6 million, 35% increase over last year, over 2010. So 88% of consumers who contacted the ACCC about scams in 2011 reported no financial loss, so that's, that's good. Now, the Scam Watch website, if you haven't been there, you can go there. You can get RSS or little emails every now and then and that tells you what the, what the latest you know, scam is so you can keep up with them all. Uh, so you make sure that you don't repeat the, the scam that they're... That's know, right. Think, you, think, of your, think of your own scam. Yeah, you, you just tweak them a bit. <laughs> You'll be right. That's right. You think, oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, Scamwatch also welcomed almost 5,000 new subscribers to the uh, to that particular email alert service. And, uh, yeah, there's, look, there's... From a, Russia? Were they from Russia? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so the preferred, preferred mode of scam delivery from online methods in 2010 to unsolicited telephone calls in 2011. And almost 52% of scams reported were delivered by phone and reported losses to these scams totaled more than $27.7 million. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Some, look, are the scammers getting smarter or is the public getting dumber? I don't... Oh, look, are you kidding me? Because I can spot a scam at a thousand paces. Yeah, you don't give... But maybe just because of my training, so maybe I shouldn't broad brush the whole society, of society that way, but, you know, my training has allowed me to... But I don't, think, it, I don't think it's just that. Spot a scam. It's just really... 
but it's, but it's, it's common, common sense. sense. A lot of it's common sense. You don't. You don't. You just don't. You don't. Uh, you just don't give your account number over the phone. You don't give your street address, your name, and all that sort of personal details over the phone. It's um. You know, pretty simple. You know, this is an advice for everybody. I simple. sometimes get a call from. Um, they say, "Oh, so and so, this is um, American Express calling, for for instance," and they say, oh, "We've had a transaction on your um, uh, account yep. that we want to we want to double check with you before we approve it. Mm. Um, can you can you give me your credit card number?" I say, "Well, if you've got it," and I said to them, "I said, come on, mate, I'm not an idiot. If you've got." If you, you if you know or you think that I've got a suspicious transaction on my account, you would know my credit card number. In which case, why are you asking me for it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, but in the end, but see, the thing is, the credit card companies are also stupid in the way they question. And I said, I'm not going to tell you anything. Mm, mm. I told them straight up. He goes, Well, you're going to if you if you know, and they read out the transaction, and I, I recognise a transaction. It was a transaction that I made a, a day or a day or two before. Mm. But I thought to myself, well, if they're scammers, how would they know that? Yeah, that's right. Have they hacked into my account or something? Mm. But I said to them, look, you're asking the wrong question and you're making very pe- a lot of people suspicious. I'm going yeah. to hang up now and I'm going to call back American Express on the line that's given to me on yep. the back of my card. Yep. Well, that's the and only way to do you, it. You tell me what extension to ask for and I'll speak and I'll get connected to you. Yep. And if you don't answer the phone, I know you. It, it's, it's a scam. So... That's a that's a little tip for you, people. I've done I've done exactly similar thing to Telstra. They ring up and they say, uh, "I just want to talk to you about your bill, but what's your your name, address, and date of birth?" And I said, "Well, what do you yes. want to know that for?" I said, "I'm not telling you that. You tell me. You you should be telling me that." <laughs> so like, you ring me. Yeah, so I know you're Telstra. He goes, "Well, we want to do you a good deal," and I said, "Well, nah. Nah. I said you you tell me what's going on," and he goes, "Well, I can't. He can't. He, he okay, can't." Okay, then see you later. And I said, "Well, okay, <laughs> bye." <laughs> and maybe yeah. I missed out on a good deal. I don't know, but maybe I missed out on a scam. So anyway, that's, that's oh look. This day and age, you can find the deals on their website. Yeah. Oh, if you're that if you're that keen, you you just say, man, what, yeah, what's your name? I'll ring you back, eh? I'll ring you back, yeah. as, as Eric said. Uh, now I've got another little story here. Mo- moving moving quite along. Uh, Google ha- is going is making changes to the Google's web spam Google bot thing that uh, crawls through the internet and uh, page ranks your page and all this sort of stuff. So Matt Cutts, a software engineer with the with Google, mm-hmm. all those people who this is this is Matt, Matt this is old Matty boy. Mr. Cuts. <laughs> Mr. Cuts. Uh geez, oh, yeah, I won't go there. But anyway, Mr. Cuts. <laughs> <laughs> all those people who have been doing, for lack of a better word, over optimization or overly doing their SEO compared to other people who are just making great content and trying to make a fantastic site, we want to make that playing field a little bit more level. Cuts said the changes came in an effort to make the Google bot smarter to handle sites relying primarily on SEO techniques and those which do not optimize the same extent. To the same extent. So Mr. Got, Cuts. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cuts. Mr. Cuts. Hello, Mr. Cuts. How do you do? He is he has got the scissors out and he is cutting up the Google bot and the 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 uh, the crawling code or whatever you want, algorithm and he's gonna make Oh it, the bot the crawlers, yes. He's gonna make it harder for uh, for all that to happen. For, for for you know, like little for you know like these massive sites, they'll pay twenty thousand dollars a month. You know, just to get all yes, these, get, yeah. and they play. They'll, they'll probably pay you know two thousand a month to some some noobs over in yeah you or know, well, India or somewhere just to hit the site all day long. You know, and and raising up all the links and more the too many keywords and too many links in too many well, blah, yeah. blah blah. Anyway, they're yeah. changing all that. They're it's keeping just over the over the pond a little bit, I suppose. Now I think you had this story as well. Windows eight is apparently coming out in October. R- well, I won't be buying it. Look at that. That looks bloody terrible. For you the don't. audio listeners, you're going to have to watch the video on youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. But that is an awful, 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 awful <laughs> user interface. You see, I was watching. No, no one's going to buy that. I think I was watching. Uh, uh, was I watching? To that tech, what's that show Leo does? Today, Tech News tech, Today. Tech News Today. That's right. Now that I, now that I can With, finally uh, watch podcasts. Tom Merritt. That's right. Yeah, so you know, and they were they were just whizzing through uh, Internet Explorer ten, I think it was that was that's coming out with the Windows eight, and yeah, they they were just bagging it because apparently there's two like versions or something, and yeah, look, watch that tech news 
uh, today. I think it was the episode yeah. from today. But uh, yeah, that was... there was one point that Firefox and my, I don't know whether it was Firefox and Chrome that didn't want to write um, a browser for Windows eight. But now they're going to. I can't remember the story. Or whether it was Windows that was saying, no, we're not going to allow, give you the API for Windows 8. I can't remember how that went. Right. But, um, right. But either if... way, I don't blame Chrome for not wanting to get on Windows 8. Jesus. Mm. But one of the suggestions was like, apparently that with the IE, it was hard to, to understand, or it wasn't just, just didn't, wasn't, um, you know, you, you couldn't just intuitively figure out what to do next like if you wanted to run a certain program or you want to go back to the start yeah, where do you go yeah exactly. it wasn't intuitive where do you go you had to actually yeah. push on a corner of the screen or something which wasn't highlighted wasn't identified as anything as such yeah that's you right had, oh you got to push here so well thanks for telling me yeah you just had to know but anyway so they were bagging it so we'll see what happens it could just be as it's all in beta at the moment so you know well i have downloaded it and i haven't installed it on anything because i don't want to waste my time mm. look i'll probably give it a burl see how we go you don't have to use the the metro i don't i believe you don't have to no you don't you press escape and it goes to the desktop but yeah. when you log in the automatic the first thing you'll see is the metro is the user interface and it is just so ugly mm. yep yeah. um all right now that yeah so, so it's released yeah so microsoft also believed to be on the verge of releasing the microsoft office for the ipad as well so yeah i bet you there thank well. god they're all happy days over there. Now, oh, here's, here's, a, here's a strange little story. Now, application for a patent had been lodged over in the US by Nokia. Now, it lists a Cambridge-based Zoran Rad Radjavec as the innovator's lead inventor. It suggests a magnetic marking could be attached to either a user's arm, abdominal area, finger or fingernail. So what they're saying is you could use your tattoo as a way of detecting when your phone rings. So, <laughs> <laughs> so because that? it's got magnetic... Is that a Nokia? Is that, is that I can see? <laughs> I, don't that? Know, I don't know what it is. is an old Blackberry? Yeah, so, um, so it's capable of detecting a magnetic field and transferring a perceivable stimulus to the skin. Magnetic ink. There you go. Oh, examples, oh. <laughs> examples of applications are... Uh, May be low battery indication, received a message, received call, calendar alert, change of profile, um, yeah, change of time zone or anything else. The magnetic field may cause vibration of one short pulse, multiple short pulses, few long pulses, strong pulses, weak pulses, and so on. That'd so, drive you crazy. You're asleep. Yeah. And you get an email. You start twitching. And your tattoo twitch starts twitching. <laughs> But isn't that amazing? But anyway, but but anyway, a spokesman for Nokia was unable to confirm whether Nokia intended to follow up its patent application with further research. So we'll see where that one goes. Crazy. Now, what about with people that have crazy. the tattoos like all over? And I mean all over. Imagine that vibrating every two seconds. They'll be having epileptic. They'll be having epileptic fits. Yeah, <laughs> you're walking down the street. And <laughs> now, uh, did you have any stories, Eric? Sorry. My phone's ringing. Yeah, that's right. Um. No, I do have a story. Mr. Nigel Dews, D-E-W-S, was, has resigned as the ch chief executive of Vodafone Australia after only 18 months in the job. Now, oh, he presided over probably one of the worst 18 months in Vodafone Australia's history, including the merger with three. And so... Even though they've said he's resigned, I would suggest that he has been um, pushed and moved sideways. Oh, Vodafone's going for, crazy. For, for someone else. Yeah. Um, sure. But what I found um, weird was that he's been given another role within the, the global company, right. a global role, and he will – I don't know what he's going to do um, – He's been promoted to a you know senior role inverted commas within VHA Vodafone Hutchison Australia. Um, the company did not reveal any details about the new role. That's a sideways move. Basically, they've moved you closer to the back door. I mm -hmm. think. Yep. That's yep. what that is. Maybe. Um, what I found funny though, the um, the new the global managing director of Hutchison One Power, which is a, a Hong Kong. Based company that owns fifty percent of Vodafone, um, 
His name is Canning Fock. <laughs> All right. He's now he's going to become the chairman of VHA, and all I can say is that he's one canning fock. <laughs> well, that's right, and he's uh, but um, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, yeah, so um, but Vodafone has been going rubbish. They're, they're apparently, you know, everyone's just leaving them in droves, and why? Yes. Why, why wouldn't they? Because the service is crap. But you know what? I find, and not, this is I've experienced all three of the telcos, all three of the major ones, Optus, Vodafone, and Telstra. Obviously, Telstra is the best as far as coverage goes and, you know, the stability of their network. Vodafone gets a massive bad rap by the public because for some reason they were just really crucified in the, by the media and by their customers. Optus, in my view, and I've had both Optus and Vodafone, are worse. Optus mm. are much worse Yep. coverage and stability than Vodafone. And they have pretty much escaped, you know, the, the vitriol from the public. And well, I, don't, I don't understand that. Well, my, I don't understand. Because, you know, look, even, not just mobile. What about the problems that Aussie was having with his, yeah, with his connection with for internet. months and months and months? What about, you know, what about they came over here and tried to install it at my, my the cable <laughs> and it lasted two days. I told them to go away. Yeah. I'm not paying any exit fees because you didn't give me what you promised you'd give me, so I'm not paying you, and I didn't. They never sent me a bill. Um, and Will, with Optus, yep. massive problems. Uh, I had Optus on the iPhones when I first got my first iPhone 3G, Optus. And you know what? If I wasn't standing on a milk crate doing Pilates trying to get a signal, it's unbelievable. Well, what about I'm with R3, which is sucking from Optus, and it's, just, it's as bad as anything else. From- it's cr- I look... I, the the day that I, the day that my contract runs out and the iPhone five is released, I'll be a happy person. Seriously. Oh, you'll be just a fanboy oh. city. Oh, well, it's, <laughs> it is fanboy city around here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I've yeah, been so drugs. Are, I've been drugs. are getting rid of seven hundred and fifty jobs. That's that's what I was getting at. They're right. restructuring as well. Seven hundred and fifty jobs will be made redundant under an internal review. Inter- you know what? Sack the people that are making the decisions about how often the towers are upgraded. Mm. And how and in and, and their pricing plans and their marketing strategies, they're the people that should be fired. The management, because it's because of the management and how they're not managing their towers properly mm. and their plans properly, so they're overloading that's right. their base. Station. Yeah, exactly. That's right. What's not... going to happen? These poor bastards in middle management and lower, the ones that just have to deal with the customers on a daily basis and com- with the complaints and the and the hatred, they're the ones that don't get fired. Yeah, and all the executives get pay rises. But and they're the ones making the worst decisions. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, get yeah. rid of them all. You're all morons. Get go away. Now, look, we've got a, we're just about towards the end of the show, but we've got a couple of emails and a couple of last late stories. But we'll do the emails first, I think. Now, I've got one here from yes. from Chalk. Now he knows. He goes, yeah, hello, boys, blah, blah, blah. He knows it. I know this is a Playboy article, but seriously, it isn't about women for a change. Thought you might be interested. I'm, I'm about to see if I, if I can track down the Logitech one. We'll make a couple of games a lot easier. All right, so let's see what he's, what he's talking about. Now, what it is, actually, is a quite an inventive little device. Now, we'll just bring it up here. And it's actually a joystick for, the, for your tablet. So you, it's only about 20, oh, it's 20 bucks, and you can buy them on the eBay or on the Amazon, I think. Now, yeah, so the joystick, because you know, apparently, now I'm not aware, because I don't play games, but apparently the, there's a little circle in the bottom corner of your, of your tablet or most of your games, and then you just, you know, rub your finger over it to move which, what, whichever way. But now Logitech right. have come out with this joystick, which suckers over the screen. So therefore, you've, you've actually got something to feel. Right, right. right, rather than nothing to feel, just get you know, and you always got to look back to see if your fingers on the knob or not on the on the screen properly. But there you go, Logitech joystick suctions onto your tablet and works as a retro thumbstick style game controller, compatible with any game that has on-screen joystick or D-pad. So the next time you're kicking zombie, or in Call of Duty or blah blah blah, yeah. So go for the virtual joystick, Milo. Have a go, that one. Have a go. Now look further down. Oh no, down. Sorry. Further down, uh, we've got, let's see what else they got here. They've got some damn little, uh, good little gadgets in here. They've got this. Go, 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 go to the one of the articles, mate. Yeah. No, <laughs> no I've only got this link here. But uh, yeah, there's iCade 8 bitty Now, it's a, a joystick or a, a retro-style game pad for, for your iPad. 
and they, they demo that with the picture of Pac-Man on there. You've got a solar iPad case. How's that one going? Mm. Yeah, hey? To yeah. charge your uh, iPad. Yeah. Jeez, it's nearly as big as the iPad. Yeah, well, that's all right. You leave that one in the sun and uh, away you go. So that's about... Yeah, you'll charge your iPad, but it will be burnt. Yeah, that's right. So I don't know what this one is. Project Fiona. Well, this may not... No, 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 I don't know what that is, but have a look at there. So, yeah, look, if you want to see more of those, it looks like there, there's uh, Playboy Entertainment for Men. It's a Gadget Geeks Guide. And it's obviously on the Playboy Online. So have a look at that, the articles I'm talking about, okay? Yes, look at the articles only, people. Please. Good stuff. So thanks, uh, Chalky, for that one. Now I've got another one here from Marcus. Hi, boys, doing promos for Telstra and new 4G Newcastle. That was on HTC Velocity. So he has he's had the phone speed testing, 26 down and 12 up. Now, did I have a picture of that? I think I did a picture. Let's have a look and see if I can find a picture for you. For those who were sitting on the on the video, there's the one he sent us in. That's a slightly lower speed than he than he's got, but yeah, uh, 4G Newcastle, 26 down, 12 up. So that's good. Great show. He's still we still wearing the Intel shirt that he won. Oh, good on you. Good work. I might have another one here. I got to give away. Got to start getting back into that sort of stuff. All right. Yeah. So that's good. Now a couple of last stories to to round off the episode, and this one here. For all those in business out there, might find this a bit bit handy. PayPal is about to launch the PayPal Here. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but PayPal Here, what is it you might ask? Well, accept credit cards on the road. So don't, you don't need the uh, expense, maybe rather expensive, I don't know how much they are, but you know, little Wi-Fi merchant facility, don't need that anymore if you want to do it through PayPal. You plug, they send you the device for free, the, the scanner for free, plugs into your earphone jack on your smartphone, and away you go, scan your card through it. Now I've got, I have got the, uh, the web page here. And you can, you can't actually get the thing at the moment, but you sign up and be notified for when they arrive, when it's arrived in Australia. Oh, there you go. I'd like to be interested and see what the fees are on that. Yeah, 2.4%. Which yeah, it's, that's just so expensive. It is high. It's high, oh, 2.4% plus 30 cents. And, uh, and right. for some reason, okay. and for some unknown reason, it's 2.9% plus 30 cents if you manually enter the card. So not sure. What's but you're doing all the work and they're charging you. Yeah, no, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, they've got, they got a little video here. Hi there, oh. I'm the owner of a mobile coffee shop and PayPal here has made getting paid faster and easier than ever before. Let I'll me show you how it prices. works. Simply <laughs> plug in the card reader and the app makes it fast and easy to tally up the total. It's Want crooked. another muffin? Done. Choose how your buyer wants to pay. PayPal, a card or cash. Then hand the phone to your customer. Sign on the phone to approve the payment. Well, that, um, thing now that's hanging off there doesn't look the very sent. good. Oh, but that's you know that's um that's probably nothing too bad. That's free. They send it yeah, to you. Yeah, but couldn't couldn't they just make it look a little bit more stable than that? Yeah, Looks like it's going to fall off. It's just a bit. It's crooked. It's just that's dumb. It's really Jonathan Ives didn't design that. Yeah, I, I see what you. you're saying. Actually, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's freaking awful. Cool. But uh, could they just make it flush up against the card? Against the phone? Yeah. Why does it have to be crooked like that? <laughs> That's so stupid. I don't know. But anyway, anyway, uh, look, if, you, if, you're, if you're on the audio podcast, go to paypal.com.au forward slash here and have a, look at, have a look at it if you're interested in it. But look, it's, it, it, look the things are expensive, but I think these days what, are most, most people are uh, happy to expect to be charged the, the fee for, the, for using a card. What? Look, I th a lot of people, um, it's built into you. You know, you go to a department store, you're not going to pay an extra. It's built into the whatever price you pay. We get, you know, they, the charge is enough, really, at the end mm. of the day. If they started charging merchant freeze, I think the place would be a ghost town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah look, uh, I've never been a fan of paying the extra merchant fee, to be honest. Um, I don't like it. I think it's built into your fees as it is. Yeah, it's it's like, it's the same as like, you know, you pay your telephone bill and they charge you the, the merchant fee. 
Like seriously, you pay yeah, your rates. Yeah, they drives just, me crazy. Yeah, and you think they just crazy. just absorb it and just not say anything. But anyway, uh, but look, other alternatives, I guess. Is I'm, and I'm not sure. I think I, th- I read this as I was going through. Now I could be wrong because I only scanned it. But like, if you uh, if the customer actually pays via their PayPal bank account, like their PayPal account, there is no fee. It's just a money transfer. Uh, so maybe have a look at that. Yes, There's, that's true. But when you want to transfer from, from that out. PayPal account back to your normal bank account, they hit you with two point four percent. Again. Yes. No. So so you got a you got a phone. You swipe. Two point four. Goes to your PayPal account. Nothing. Right. Because it's going to the PayPal account, so that you don't get charged for that coffee that you just sold or muffin. Right. But you want to get access to that cash, right? Because you want to pay your rent or whatever, yep, yep. and you want to transfer it to your Westpac account, at that point you should be paid 2.4%. So one way or another, you're going to pay 2.4%. But if, if, you, if you sold a muffin you're getting, and swiped the card, you're getting charged 2.4%. Yeah. And then when you, you take... You get $10. Yeah. The customer doesn't get charged 2.4%. You you do. Come, it'll come out of the $10 that you've charged for the muffin. Yeah, then, so now you've got $9.80 left or whatever. 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 So then you get charged another two point four. If you, if it goes straight to your PayPal account, you get, you'll still have ten bucks. Okay, right, 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 right. Yep. If you swipe it and it goes to a third party account, then you will lose two point four percent. Right. Okay. So if it goes to your PayPal account, you don't pay anything. But when you transfer it out of that, that's when you pay. Mm. So if one way or another, you'll pay. It's just a matter of you pay it now or do you pay it later. Now, last story. This is a bit of a oh pie in the sky. <laughs> Uh, the what, what who are these mob the the pirate bay? They, remember they wanted to, to own an island. You know everyone was on oh, the they? they wanted to buy an island over somewhere around the place. Oh, look, I, I did write that down where they wanted to buy it. But anyway, um, they almost four years ago they they announced they wanted to buy the micro nation of Sealand. That's right. So they could Sealand. so they could host their site without having to bother about copyright law. An ambitious plan that turned out to be unaffordable. So now, where were they going to get this money from? Well, now what they're talking about, and look, this is this has got to be. I, I don't know why it's out this week and why it's not out next week. You know, with April Fools coming up, well, for fair income. But have a listen. Uh, discussion that's currently taking place on the Pirate Party's international mailing list. Apparently, the pirates have big plans to launch a file sharing site into space. Also, another plan to move its front end proxy servers into the sky, creating a network of small mobile computers that are tethered to GPS-enabled aerial drones. <laughs> oh, jeez. The airborne... They're out of their mind. <laughs> These people are off their tree. The airborne computers called low-orbit server stations uh, will supposedly be harder for law enforcement agencies to terminate. Uh, it plans to use low-cost Linux computers such as the good old Raspberry Will Pi, the $35 one, on board to build its fleet. So there you go. Must be in April. Getting ready for April Fool, surely. Jeez, have a go at it. A drone. <laughs> Just crazy. They're, They're kid- off the tree. They are kidding, aren't they? They are kidding. But anyway, that's the Pirate Bay for you. That's the Pirate Bay. All right, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Har- <laughs> me hearties. <laughs> When's Pirate Day coming back? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, Eric, before we go? Anything you want to get off your chest? No, look, look I'll go very quickly here. Um, no, no, Nigel Jews resigned. Uh, TPG is uh, thinking of doing unlimited on NBN, so keep an eye out for that. But be aware that your service might be degraded if they don't have proper backhaul, so keep that in mind. Uh, what else have we got here? We have... Uh, what happened to my what happened to my notes? They've all gone away. Hang on a minute. I'll just tell you. Uh, IPTV geez. launch plans. TPG yes. also unveiled plans to launch its own internet protocol television service over the next two months. Well, there you go. Everyone's getting yeah, in on the act. Go. Everyone's getting in on it. What else is there? Uh, TPG. No one's going to buy Windows 8, so just ignore that. <laughs> uh, Telstra. Where's the Telstra story there? Uh, Telstra Fireball Cup by okay, we we've been through that, and that's it. All right, good, good, good. All right, so as always, contacting us at Glenn, Will, or Eric at aussietechheads.com.au or on the Twitter. Eric, where can we find you on the Twitter? It's Eric Franco, E R I K F R A N C O. You can see me at Aussie Tech Heads or Will at Mr. Tomkinson. 
And uh, so that's about it for another show. Another Thursday night, another show, another week is almost gone. Don't forget the footy tip and competition AFL comp starts this week. How are you going in that, Eric? The uh, AR. Oh, look, I've got, I've got a quick summary. First week, six out of eight. I've got a bit cocky. Died in the Second bump. week, four, four out of eight. Not good. 50% is not a pass. And last week, also four out of eight. But the first four, I was four out of four until Sunday. Oh, I think I might have been none out of four until <laughs> Sunday. Now, now, no doubt your Saturday night's already planned. And uh, <laughs> we will be seeing, waiting with, uh, with enthusiasm as we see what happens, I suppose, with the Queensland election on Saturday yes, night. Indeed. So indeed. Um, may, the, may the best team win. Oh, well, we know that who that team is. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Bob Catter. Anna, stop. Uh, <laughs> when I go up to Brisbane next, which um, will be after the election, yep. I'm going to drive into the closest McDonald's and I expect to see Anna Bly there saying, would you like fries with that? Yeah. <laughs> she, oh, look, no, she'll be, she'll be on a good pension. She'll be pensioned off. Oh, oh, well, th- th- then I'll be putting a law in that says anyone that puts the state in $80 billion of the debt doesn't get the pension. Do you know, we've do, got to use that money to pay the debt off. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, um, well, we won't talk any more about that. that. That's for another show, like maybe Chew on the Fat or something like that. But anyway, yes, uh, that's... Indeed. Are we, is chewing the Fat this week? Uh, We're going to give I it a shot. We'll, uh, we'll have a quick one. I think we'll run it through. Give it a shot. All right. So that's, give it a shot. that's all we've got time for. So thanks, everyone, for... For listening, for downloading, or whatever, and maybe you can even uh, jam this up on the uh, on the Apple TV and see us on the big screen if you like. YouTube.com forward slash the secret hub. All right, so until next week, uh, thanks for listening and goodbye for now. Ta da! Bye, all. See you guys.